this is Top of the Morning. I'm John Carrington, and I'm here with Linda Dennis, and we're going to talk about Partners in Care. What is Partners in Care? Partners in Care is a local grassroots, private, nonprofit organization that's been around for 23 years. Um, we started in Anne Arundel County. Uh, we now cover four sites, so we're also in Frederick, uh, Upper Shore, Eastern Shore, which includes Caroline and Talbot, and Calvert County. All right, and who is your target audience? Uh, seniors, actually all ages, um, but primarily over the age of 50, and uh, they are the residents who've built our communities and want to stay active in community and age in their own homes. So we started the organization to get back to neighbors helping neighbors. It's actually a time bank organization, so the person who might drive someone to the doctor gets that time in the bank for when he or she might need some help, and it helps everyone to feel engaged and needed, um, and also okay about asking for help when they need it because they've done something to contribute. All right. What can our viewers do to help you? Well, there's a lot of things. Uh, an hour of your time would be awesome. We're very flexible about volunteering. We don't require any certain task or time. We just want people to use their own gifts and talents to do things to help each other. And like I said, those ways we used to be better about helping neighbors with, like friendly visits or rides or um, small honeydew repairs. Uh, we have a wonderful resale shop in Pasadena, which raises about 40% of our budget. We're very thankful for it um, because otherwise we primarily depend on grants to sustain ourselves. Um, and the worst part about grants is that uh, we have to spend the money before we get it from our grantors and cash flow is an issue as, as it is with many nonprofits. So the boutique, everything we sell in there uh, helps us to support managing the programs, but it's also a way, a face in the community for people to learn about us, um, but a way for all of our members to give back as well. Um, so volunteering, donations to the boutique, monetary donations, um, pretty much uh, we'll take whatever people want to do to, to help out and support our mission. Right, if somebody wanted to visit the boutique to volunteer, how would they contact you? How would they find the boutique? Uh, the boutique is at 6 South Ritchie Highway in Pasadena, right at East West Boulevard, and we're actually open Tuesday through Saturday. We sell everything from vintage to furniture to jewelry to books to clothes, um, so it's a great place to shop for people that like resale. If they're not members and they want to take donations, they can get the tax receipt that you would at Goodwill or Salvation Army. Um, to volunteer, they go through an orientation process with our office, but they're welcome to get the application and learn more about us by shopping in the boutique and talking to our staff and volunteers there. Okay. What is your biggest challenge? Uh, getting the word out to the community. Um, people can, can see our sign, they can read our mission, but I think until they have a need to be engaged in a volunteer activity or to seek out the kind of help that our community offers, then it doesn't really register who we are and what we do. Mm -hmm. All right, a couple, 83 years old, they own their home, they need help. They contact you, what happens? Uh, we find out what their needs are and what they're actually asking for because we also are aware of other resources in the community beyond what we are able to provide through our volunteer network. But they would be interviewed in their home. Um, we check the home out for safety because our volunteers would be going there. We check it out to see if there's other services they could benefit from that we wouldn't offer. We get to know them a little bit. We also ask them because we believe no matter how frail you are that everyone has gifts that they can contribute. So we also talk to them about what they might like to do to engage their time and, um, and feel productive and needed. Um, and it, it might be something as simple as donations to the boutique or baking their mom's favorite pound cake for a meeting that we're having. There's just so many things that people can do. And then once we get the information we need from them to put in our computer, um, they just call it. Basically the idea is we're a niche in the community. We're not trying to be the Department of Aging, but we're a partner to the Department of Aging. So where people might be case managed by them or receive rides on their bus, it's there's never enough resources. So. Um, the Department of Aging, for instance, does rides to the doctor and to the senior centers, but they don't have the resources to do grocery shopping or hair appointments. So to us, you know, that's a great niche. Um, and it's also about quality of life for us. We want people to be able to do the things that they were used to doing when they could do it for themselves. There's no fee for what we do. Um, we just want everyone to understand that it's uh, the, to make the request that neighbors would do to help you, um, neighbors helping neighbors, and to think about ways to give back. 
So if you're interested in contacting Partners in Care, we have a website, www.partnersincare.org, where we do have uh, our volunteer application and description of programs. Uh, you can certainly call our main office at 410-544-4800, where we have staff and volunteers who are willing to um, answer your questions about how you can become involved or to get further information. All right, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with more of Top of the Morning. Welcome back to Top of the Morning. I'm John Carrington, and my special guest is Linda Dennis, and she's with Partners in Care. Partners in Care. <laughs> and of course, you are a social worker. You could have worked anywhere in the systems that are available to the community. Why Partners in Care? Actually, I've worked just about everywhere, but <laughs> I'm really glad that, I, glad that I've migrated to working with older adults um, because uh, they are the people who've built our communities. Um, They've been our pastors, our pharmacists, our teachers, our lacrosse coaches. They want to still be remembered. Um, they want to recount their memories and have people to talk to about it. Many are isolated. So through our network and Partners in Care, we're able to give them friendly visits. Uh, those visits that, that occur just going to the doctor with some of our volunteers are some of the greatest moments for both the driver and the rider. And so to me, and the most rewarding thing about being in the program is that it's never just about the ride or the task that's being matched. There's always a rippling effect of how people are affected, meeting their neighbors and talking about the restaurants they love and feeling connected. Um, and you can go and do something as simple as replacing a light bulb for someone who shouldn't be climbing a ladder and you, you've hung the moon for them. It's a quick fix, but it's a huge, so much bigger than just replacing the light bulb. So it's just, it's just rewarding. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do anything else. All right, let's give some pats on the back to the staff. Who are your key people? Well, we have a director who uh, is the co one of the co-founders of the organization. As I said, it was founded in 1993 in Anne Arundel County. She's still there, um, and she's uh, doing an awesome job of working with a very strong board who's working on sustainability for us and a uh, long-term management plan. Um, 
We have transportation coordinators who are paid by grants. We have development people. We've got member care coordinators who have social work backgrounds, um, aging backgrounds who help people by talking on the phone and just trying to figure out what their issues might be. Sometimes they don't even really know what to ask for, so we get to know them and we talk to them and realize that there's three or four or five small things that they could use that we could help connect them with. All right, what's the typical question you get when you say partners in care helps the community? What, what is the follow-up question people will ask you? Oh, what is partners in care? Um, you know, there's so many home health agencies out there with names like that, that um, it really doesn't speak to our mission. Um, I don't know that we could have a title that would because we're so unique. Um, but I just basically just give them the five second elevator speech, which is that we are a nonprofit empowering older adults to age in their communities by providing neighborly services through a unique culture of service exchange. I've got it down after about uh, 10 years of being there myself, but um, it's just, it's all important because the people really need to understand that reciprocity so that they at least, at the very least, are appreciating the time that the volunteers are giving them and realize that we're not a service, but a community, a trusted community. So many people uh, hesitate to ask for help because they don't have any way of giving back. Mm -hmm. What do you do in that regard? They want to do something in return for your help. Well, first I want to say that that's the reason we started with the time bank culture, because we know that people have dignities and, um, and really want to do things independently. And so if we tell them through that interview process and get them hooked up with our organization that we believe everybody has gifts and talents and spend a little time getting to know them, we've learned things about members in their home like um, that they just they love the computer or they love to write notes or they love to chat on the phone. Well, instantly we put them down to make a friendly phone call to a member. Uh, every Every member in our organization gets a birthday card and all these cards are written from the home so if someone is interested and can write and you know just address and stuff and sign our cards so that we can stamp them and get them out when they need to go then we take the cards to them at home so they can do that um, and it's not something that they do every week or every day it's just that once those gifts and talents and interests are listed in our database and we have a need for that then we can go to those people and say hey we have a need for you to write some cards can you do that or you mentioned that you like to make your mom's cookies could I get some of those for my meeting next week because personally I would much rather have homemade cookies than something from a grocery store already made and I can also tell the people at the meeting that a member made these and she got an hour and a half in the bank because it took her an hour and a half to make the cookies so it's really all about time and the, the most unique thing about um, the time bank it's not the same thing as bartering because in bartering you might have um, a plumber and an electrician who both kind of have the same kind of training, the same skill level, they charge about the same for their services. So a plumber might say to the electrician, I'll do this two hour job for you if you come back and help me with this electrical job at my house. In a time bank, it might be the driver gets two hours for the ride and the, the rider gets an hour for a phone call that they make for somebody or someone comes and answers the phone or works in the boutique. All those things contribute to making our community rich really rich and um, broader in what we can offer people to help them feel supported by that network of care and so it's it doesn't matter it's just about hours and about you thinking in terms of giving and contributing All right. what is the most fre frequently requested service it's transportation um, we started with transportation because we were using a survey that had been put out prior to are uh, getting organized, um, asking aging adults in Anne Arundel County what their main concerns were about aging here, specifically, and the number one concern across the board was transportation. 23 years later, across the nation, that, that remains the biggest concern for aging adults, because even if they are driving, they realize that they won't always be, or that maybe they're becoming fearful of going into town and parking in garages, but they're okay with their neighborhood places, or just the issue of affording a car and insurance when they're living on limited income. So transportation is about 80% of what we do even still, um, and, and that's usually why people join. And part of our challenge, because if they're thinking in terms of partners in care is just about transportation, then they don't also think about maybe if that hand railing is loose on their front porch, they could call and see if we have a volunteer to do that as well. The friendly visits, the help with the mail, if you've got low vision and you can't sort your bills, maybe someone needs to come just put it in piles for you or help you write your checks. So there's many things, and you know the rule of thumb really is anything you would ask a neighbor to do. 
I talk about the geography, the boundaries of for rendering services from mm -hmm. partners in care. That's a good question. Um, we're not specifically county funded, although we do receive a grant from the county executive's office. Um, so we don't have to adhere strictly to the boundaries of the county, but we have to we have to think about where our volunteer members are that can help that person and where it makes sense to send that person because we want to make it efficient but we also want to have those volunteers be from their community so that they are finding things in common to talk about to make that person feel connected um, so whereas the laurel is a good example because laurel sits on three counties and it's very difficult for them to figure out where they're supposed to be getting services from like hospitals to community centers and things like that but we have volunteers that live in laurel and as residents of Laurel, they're very comfortable driving to Columbia to the doctor or over the county line into Howard to the hospital for the doctors. So wherever it makes sense for them to go, um, like I said, it has to be efficient. The driver has to feel comfortable, then we're willing to do that. And we also fill that niche of getting people into the specialist in Baltimore because there's so many people, um, like at Johns Hopkins and University Hospital, the veterans, who need to get there to see their specialists. So that is, we've got drivers that are comfortable going into Baltimore. So we, we we do that as well okay do you have events that you do on a regular basis I mean highlight events that you do during the year to promote or talk about mm -hmm. well the boutique has events all year long um, they operate like a full-fledged uh, resale shop they have uh, sales monthly they have senior special days they've got you know all the purses 50% off whatever they feel like they need to so there's sales going on all the time there we have a jewelry event coming up on April 30th um, at Baldwin Hall in Millersville um, there will be 20 vendors there uh, selling accessories and jewelry and then we hold our jewelry back that's been donated all year that is kind of special um, that we feel might might go well at this at the um, event it's just one day but last year it earned us almost ten thousand dollars so um, it's it's a, it's good it's a good fundraiser for us and um, people like jewelry so <laughs> they tend to come out and do that um, and then our board has a bull, a bull roast every every fall that's usually held in Glen Burnie at Michael's um, where we have live music and food and silent auctions and raffles and sometimes a money wheel and you know it's just it's a social event for us we all really enjoy it um, but that is the one event that our board does to try to get the community to learn about us and to get involved. All right. I'm glad you mentioned uh, the bull roast. That's a seasonal event. Yes. What is the biggest request for service season for your, for your organization? What is the peak period when services are requested? There is no peak. Um, actually, it's we, we used to have summer slow down for some reason, like they do for many businesses, but the requests for help um, never stop, and except maybe in snow. <laughs> and um, our orientation sessions are held monthly for people that want to volunteer at our office. Uh, they're held in our office, and they are pretty much booked. Um, at eight, you know, its capacity is eight for a session, just so we can get to know the members, the new members that are coming in, and we pretty much have one of the two sessions um, that we hold monthly be filled. So okay. it's pretty awesome and, and of course how can people reach you to offer their help or request help right so our main office number is 410-544-4800 uh, we're also located in Pasadena on the hospice of the Chesapeake campus um, you're welcome to stop in and say hey and meet us personally but we're happy for you to call and get signed up for our orientation well we're gonna take a short break and we'll be back with more of top of the morning This is what you suggested I come yeah, to. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm not. <laughs> oh, these look familiar. Oh, what this is is a uh, microwave egg cooker. 
so much. Yeah, uh, well, I just donated it to you. <laughs> Four yeah. dollars on here, but change it to orange. Yeah. Okay. What? What is this? It's cookie cutters. You know, cookie cutters. Put three. So, do you want them to say something? They don't want to say anything. Oh. <laughs> the one volunteer that I know will be willing to say something. Is well, you, this is to help promote. Um, you know, the shop and everything. So, like, can you say how much you enjoy working here? Is that like... Oh, I love it, yes. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Marion, you want to say something? Yeah, Marion. Yes, I really yeah. love it. Talk, Marion. Listen, these ladies and, and Jeff, whoever is, whoever is, ladies are really sweet and they're really nice and they treat you great. And um, I'm, I'm so glad they let me come. <laughs> It's a joy to work. <laughs> it's a joy to work. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> All right. And how about you two ladies? You're, you're happy to have found friends here, and you're doing a wonderful service to the community? Come on, ladies, speak up. Oh, I just like the ladies and the fact that I'm helping someone. Very good. I like to volunteer because it gets me out of the house and gets me to associate with people. Very good. And it's like a win-win because you're doing a great cause and, and they need somebody to do this, right. you know. So this is a lot of the work back here in the back room. Yes. Taking the donations, this sorting them all out. Done. <laughs> and you're the guys to do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you ladies. I appreciate that. <laughs>